my, my job is to somehow make them curious enough or persuade them by hook or crook to get more aware of themselves and where they came from and what they are into and what is already there and just to bring it out. This is what compels me to compel them. And I will do it by whatever means necessary. Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about healing our intimacy disorders, unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first ourselves and then others. Every episode, we will talk about advice you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow in your self-worth. I'm Sheena Lachey, love addiction coach and trauma specialist. Let's begin. Hello, hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Black Girls Heal. I hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever you are and that you are being surrounded by love, the love that you deserve, the care that you deserve, the support that you deserve. This has been such a beautiful week. I've been able to meet and talk with so many of you, whether or not it's an email or the DMs or in real life. And so I just want to express my gratitude for this community and for the amazing women that you are. And just thank you for being a part of this journey for, oh, this podcast has been out for five years now, this version of it. And then, but I've been podcasting for about two years before that. So many of you have been with me since that time. And so I just want to say thank you so much for, for being a part of the family and being a part of the community. That thanks and that gratitude is very impromptu, but it's good because it's totally related to what we are going to talk about today. So today we're going to be talking about changes that are coming, transitions that are coming, and the transitions and changes are about here at Black Girls Heal. I think these are going to be really great changes for all of us, for all of us to go deeper into our self-love, into having healthy relationships, starting with our relationship with ourselves. And of course, radiating to the people and loved ones and partners and friends and children and all the people that we have around us that we pour love into and that we receive love from. And also being able to cultivate the space to where if those are relationships that we want to have, to make sure that we don't have people, things, situations getting in the way of what could be our biggest blessings because we're holding on to things that no longer fit for us, that we have outgrown. Because we're afraid of being happy, we're afraid of being free. And so these changes, I hope, are going to help us get deeper and closer to that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Before we get started, let's take a small break to say thank you to this week's sponsors. Okay, so let's talk about these changes. So first... First thing for you to know is the podcast and its physical structure is going to stay the same. Still going to be doing weekly podcasts. If I ever feel like I want to transition to this podcast being seasonal or what I've kind of been playing around with more than once a week. But if any of those things ever change, y'all, of course, will know. But for right now, our structure is staying the same. We are still going to have our weekly podcast, but it's more what I'm going to be teaching within is going to change a little bit, at least in energy. So as y'all know, this podcast, Black Girls Heal, is for those of us who struggle with love addiction and love avoidance, where we have a consistent pattern of being attracted to and in relationship with people who are unavailable, or we show up as unavailable to other people. It's hard for us to let people in. We struggle with trust. All of the good advice that people have, all of the healthy couples with couple goals, all the other things that people can seem to do so easily misses the mark with us. And it's not by effort of us not really trying or really wanting to have change or, you know, maybe even hiding things from our therapist. We're not doing none of that. Like we're fully showing up. Shout out to those who are still kind of struggling with those things. But for the most part, many of us are really trying to show up as our best selves and things still aren't clicking. So I created this podcast for women like us, women who are highly functional, you know, professional women, smart women who just can't get it right. Because what I found through my own journey as not only a licensed therapist, but a woman on the other side of the chair and going through my own recovery program is that this was never about just having the right information. This was never about someone just telling you what to do. This was never about when you're tired of being sad and broken, then you're going to create change. All of this is a trauma response. 
is a recreation of our trauma, is a recreation of us enacting what is familiar to us. And even with that knowledge, knowing that that's what this is, that doesn't stop the pattern. The compulsions around self-sabotage, the compulsions around addictive relationships and trauma bonds, and really feeling like we lose ourselves. No one was really talking about what that feels like and, and giving credence to that and telling people that to just stop and just be strong and love yourself. So by me going through my own recovery process and also going through years of my own professional training with mental health and, and helping women, I created this platform to help women heal, right? So we, we're, we're caught up on the backstory for the most part. Of course, there's more, but that's the summary. And so for the last five years here, seven years in total, I've been talking about the issues of sex and love addiction. And even though, even though I have said that one of the core missions of this podcast is to help you have a better relationship with other people and also yourself, I cannot lie and say that there were not times of not a lot of times that I was teaching these topics that related to self-love and healing. But it was for the goal of y'all getting into healthy relationships. It was for the goal of you, if you were someone who was struggling with dating, that you could finally start to break patterns and start to date in a healthier way. If you were one of my listeners who is married or in a committed relationship, that you could take what I was talking about around self-development and trauma and how it was playing out in you and all the ways that you may work against yourself and all of your fears. And take that so that you can have a healthier relationship with a partner. And even though that is amazing, and even though I fully believe that all of us, everything is interconnected. And if we improve one er to improve one area of our life, we have to improve it all. Like there's no, especially when it comes to self-love and relationships, it doesn't matter what corner you start with. For you to improve your relationships, you got to improve yourself. And once you start to improve yourself, you improve your relationships and you improve your self-esteem and how you feel about yourself. It's all interwoven. Even though that is a truth, over the last several years, and again, especially the last uh, year or so, I have, in my own personal growth, just more and more understood, even though I've been telling y'all for so long, and I know you've heard from other teachers and other healers as well, that your most important relationship is the one with yourself. And that is the one that is going to give you the most joy, the most security, the most safety, the most dependability, the most happiness, the most clarity, like that is your most important relationship. And the more I've grown and the more I've taught and the more I've watched all of y'all and watched how things have shown up and learned from other folks as well, the more that has sunk even deeper inside, the more that is taken, the roots have gone to places that I didn't know that they were bare, right? It's just, I've become more firm in that. And I've become, gotten a lot more wisdom when it comes to that area from, again, the the folks that I'm learning from, from y'all, from my higher power, from all these things, right? So with that deep awareness and knowledge and me seeing, you know, even when you're in the most amazing romantic partnership, you're still left with you at the end of the day, you know, after the butterflies and after the romance and after the gifts and after the sex and after all that stuff, how you feel about you is what, what allows you to receive all that is what allows you to rest in it is what allows you to not go into worst case scenarios is what allows you to trust by you learning and knowing how to trust yourself and having the deepest faith within yourself. And, you know, I really love the way a lot of teachers talk about boundaries these days. You know, for the longest time when people have talked about boundaries, it's always been that boundaries are about a set of rules that you impose onto other people for them to like act right when they're around you. But so many healers and educators are really emphasizing the fact that boundaries are not about rules that you impose on other people. It's about your own standards that you have for yourself. So instead of the boundary being, well, I only talk to people who talk to me this kind of way. And so you're telling someone how to act is an internal belief in your mind, is an internal knowing 
of your value and that you deserve to be talked to with respect and everything. So when someone doesn't act right, I'm not wasting my time trying to get someone to be better or coach them and guide them to 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 be the the marionette puppet that I want them to be. I'm focused on me and I and I have enough belief and trust and I'm I'm coming from an abundant mindset. I'm not coming from scarcity and lack, which many of us come from when we have histories of neglect where we we feel like we have to make this person, we have to make this relationship work because if we don't there won't be another one coming up. But once you start to heal those places inside of you, you're able to move different. You're able to, to believe different. You're, you're able to expect differently. And that's the key. And so you end up being in relationships that you're more drawn to that give you all those things that you want. So what does all this mean? <laughs> all of this means that one thing that I am going to be switching for myself energetically is to focus more on making sure that I am teaching y'all how to focus on loving yourself for loving yourself's sake. As much as I love testimonials about rings and about, you know, you're finally dating really great people, that you've made boundaries or that you've changed the connections within your own family system, that you are opening up more, doing more hobbies, that you have better friendships. I love all of those things. I I understand that those are outcomes of the inner work that we are doing. And, you know, especially me coming out of love addiction and love avoidance, I think part of the reason why I really emphasized in my mind teaching from that space is because I I remember and I know that when I was deep in the throes of love addiction and coming out of it, I was getting better because I was tired of being in pain, but also because I wanted this outcome. I wanted what I had put onto the mountaintop was the peak ultimate experience of life, which is to be chosen, to be chosen, to get chose, to be able to choose other people, to, 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 you know, brag, to have a story to tell whenever we're going around a circle and updating people and what's going on. Like that is where I knew I was drawing a lot of hope and inspiration from. So me knowing that and knowing who listens to this podcast, I was like, well, let me speak to these hopes and these and these connections. But, you know, so many of us are waking up right now. So many of us, if I can call out a trend that I actually really like that I see that people are talking about, is that there are so many people who are waking up to the fact that you can truly, truly have a full and loving life outside of a relationship, outside of a romantic partnership, and that you have a full, deep identity that is truly yours and is truly special. And I think for so long, the narratives around what I just said, to have like a full life outside of a relationship, for many years, it was like a place of resignation. Like, okay, well, for right now, you're single. So go ahead and build that full life while you wait. And I don't know if that was truly what was happening in the atmosphere or because I was very deeply involved in religious culture, uh, which definitely kind of preaches this. You have not arrived in life until you have a husband and kids or a wife and kids uh, that you are lesser than, that you don't understand, you know, God, the gospel, whatever it may be, until you reach this ultimate part of this ultimate chapter of life. And so all of the things that gets into your psyche, whether or not that's directly said or, you know, what you're volunteered for, what you're not volunteered for, all the indirect things, you know. So again, I don't know if that is truly how everybody else has experienced life or if that was where it was in in my world. And so just speaking my experience for so long, being single was like, here's here's what you do while you wait kind of thing. And I know that's still kind of out there in a lot of different places. And then for a long time, at least maybe around the things that were around me, it was, well, you can be single because there is, there's no hope out there and everybody's crazy and, and it's dry and there's only trash. And for someone who is attracted to men, all men are trash and, you know, whatever. And so, you know, just, you might as well just hang it up. And I think that's also very destructive and very dangerous. And also, also there has to be, I don't know if I want to say that now, I'm going to save that for a minute. I'll just say that those types of beliefs, 
are so skewed on one side of the extreme that the power of understanding the truth that there's predators and that there's red flags for you to be aware of and that relationships are not ultimate, the power that comes with understanding that truth gets lost in the hatred that you have to adopt when you go to the complete opposite extreme where you're not able to live in balance. What started off being really great self-awareness actually ends up becoming your blinders and you're not able to see the full picture because there's a part of you as a part of your perspective that you're not allowed to have access to. And I'll, I'll speak for me and I'll speak for the people in my circle. This may not be everybody. So that's my disclaimer. But it sometimes is easier to go to those places in hopes that if I go to that place of like negativity and hate and calling it that I'm being real and everything, I, I, I hope that if I get to that place that is going to erase this desire to be in partnership, this desire to have companionship, this desire. If I am someone who wants to be in monogamous relationships, that if I get to that place, then maybe it'll smush that hope enough to where it just goes away and that doesn't happen, right? Which is what can lead to like bitterness and resentment. And what I was going to say is I feel like there's a place of balance. I feel like there's a place where you can get to, whether you're partnered or not, single or not, where you can get to a place where you rightly are able to prioritize the hierarchy of relationships in your life with your relationship with yourself still being at the top. Because if you ain't right, and I've said this to my mothers, I've said this to my wives, I've said this to single women, I've said this to everybody, but the, the phrase I'm going to use is relates to, to moms. But if mama ain't right, nobody's right. If you are not healthy, mom, if you are not able to be connected to your hobbies and your identity and what makes you happy and being able to self-soothe, it's going to make it real hard for you to teach emotion and regulation skills to your kids. It's going to make it real hard for you to teach them how to be happy and not get into dependent relationships with other people, to have their own set of boundaries, to figure out their identity and who they are. Like you are the source. You are the source. And it's going to be really hard for you to find the type of friendships that you want, and this is for everyone, it's going to be really hard for you to find the type of friendships you want when you don't even know who you are and what you like and what brings you joy and what makes you laugh. And what are the things that you find shysty? Like, are you hanging out with people? I'm someone who typically, I do not like people who are like real mean and sarcastic. And that's just not my flavor. But I know that's a flavor for a lot of people. And so, but if I'm, if I don't know that about myself, I'm going to go and hang out with people who are like, you know, have that type of sense of humor and I'm going to feel really out of place and I'm going to feel like really alone. I'm going to feel really much understood. And then they're going to feel judged because I'm not laughing at their jokes and I'm not like really connecting with them. And so then they feel upset when really, if I knew who I was, I could totally love and respect people for where they are. and correctly place them in my hierarchy of relationships and know that there are, this is the vibe of people who I connect the most with because that's who I am. And so that helps me build my structure of the life that I want. So with all that said, how is that going to change what I talk about here? There are some other examples that I was going to say, but for the sake of time, because I have a couple other things that I want to share. So with all this said, how is this going to change the podcast, if at all? So I actually went back and I looked at the full archive of all of my podcast episodes and I looked at, you know, the titles and, you know, what I taught about there, I looked at the notes and that kind of thing and just remembered what I've always taught. And I've always talked about self-love. I've always, you know, even in giving relationship solutions and scenarios, I've always come back to talking about us. So in my mind, I was like, wait, I need to be talking about self-love. And I'm like, girl, you, you've already been doing that. <laughs> you've already been doing that. But I think it's more, I'm going to be more conscious and more intentional about making sure that that's the focus. You know, there are a lot of amazing, amazing healers and teachers where their sweet spot is really focusing on self-love for self-love's sake. And I truly, I truly still 
love the fact that we can learn so much about ourselves through the mirror of relationships and what that says about us and what it says about our belief systems. So I'm still going to be teaching from that lens. However, I think what I'm going to make more overt, especially in future podcasts, is that your ultimate relationship is the one with yourself. And as much as I, and I hope that by doing that, that people who are just starting this healing recovery journey, who are just starting this place where they are, you know, realizing that they are their own person and entity outside of what their mama says, outside of what their dad says, outside of what that ex-partner says, outside of what their current partner or relationship says. I'm hoping that for those who are just starting this recovery journey, that me speaking to that place in you that already exists, that you already have everything you need inside of you, that that will help ignite that, that understanding, right? Oh, something I didn't say earlier, and we'll see if I get this to get my editor to move this forward, or I'll just probably keep it here, actually. There is, there is a balance. There is a sweet spot between not feeling like you have to hate someone or hate a certain sex. And I've heard this from my queer clients as well, where they're like, these women are crazy. <laughs> like, so it's not just, it's, it's, it's not all butterflies and rainbows on one side and then the grass is greener on the other. Like there, there's dysfunction in all places, especially when you are still learning how to show up for yourself, learn what you want and what you don't want. Like the don't get too, don't get deceived and then get your heart broken in a place where you didn't think that that was possible. So, but there is a balance between, I hate this entire population of people and I can't stand them and I don't need them. And then the other extreme of being boo boo the fool or being a pick me or being someone who completely loses their identity and their sense of self and can't feel, don't feel a connection to themselves unless they are in a relationship. They don't feel that connection to their purpose. There's a middle ground. And I believe somewhere in that middle ground, you can fully, deeply, intimately love yourself and have space for partnerships and have space for friendships and have space for family. I I don't feel like we have to choose. And I think there are, are so many places and so many platforms that, and it could be just because of what where their niche is and what and their philosophy and how they teach, but there are so many places that teach you're either all in on this or you're not at all. So if you're going to focus on dating and relationships, then you need to be fully all in and like it becomes your full life versus you actually having a life. Or if you're going to focus on having a life, then you just need to give up on the fact that you may be able to have partnerships and relationships. Just put it in the back of your mind. You know, just commit to fully being alone. But even then, I believe that there is a balance between you coming to a place where you dissenter relationships and you're able to, if you need to have that come to Jesus moment with yourself, that you may be single either for a long time or indefinitely. And so what does that mean for you? I believe that you can have those honest, real moments with yourself without feeling like you have to completely erase that if companionship did come your way, you would be open to it. Like you can hold two truths at the same time, that this is my life and I'm going to live my life more abundantly. And if it's, and if it changed, I would be open. And the same way that there has to be some balance between being able to see the game for those of us who are, I mean, for everyone, but especially for those of us who are dating or romantically attracted to or in partnerships with men, there has to be a balance between being aware of the game and what it looks like and what to expect and what are the red flags and how your intentions are going to be different than theirs and how you're both speaking English, but you're speaking a completely different language. Like there has to be a place where you can be fully grounded and honest with yourself about what that looks like while still allowing yourself to move forward if that's what you want to do. And There are not a lot of places that teach us how to live in that balance. And so, yeah, so I hope that I hope that I'm able to teach in a place where prioritize the self-love and your relationship with yourself for all the reasons that I already shared. Hey, 
We hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Let's take a quick break to say thanks to this week's sponsors. So with that said, so here's the second change that's going to happen. At the end of last year, I made a comment. I can't remember what podcast episode it was or if it was a bonus episode that was like doing the check-ins and everything. But I had made a comment that I wanted to be a coach for everyone. So even though I know that there are many of you who listen to this podcast who may have not, who may have not, might not have been, I'm trying to think, how do you say that? (laughs) Might not have been like one of my recovery school students yet or invested in any of like the smaller programs or come to one of our live events or retreats or anything, that there are still tens of thousands of you, probably more than that, because we're in the millions of downloads at this, at this point. There are many of you who study this podcast like religiously, or at least, you know, you are taking different nuggets from what I talk here, leave the rest and combine it with things that you are learning from your own therapist, from other sources and just incorporating it into your everyday life. Right. And so I remember I was talking about how I wanted to just be more intentional about that and almost like make the podcast a curriculum. Now, as we know, at the end of last year, and I mean, things just really culminated. I, I ended up having to close the coaching portion of my recovery school program. That's why, especially for those of you who are up to date or who have been binging, you may hear me say a whole lot, okay, this is your last chance because I'm not going to be coaching anymore. It's because your girl couldn't function. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't barely talk. It was hard for me to move around. I had consistent migraines and everything. We all know kind of, well, some of you may not know, but that was my story to the point that I did not think that I would be here by the end of 2023. Like I I honestly didn't think so. And so I was making arrangements, shutting everything down because I didn't know what was going to happen. And so with that said, all these other plans that I had got pushed to the back burner. I closed the professional mastermind that I was going to do, you know, the certification program, all this stuff that was going to happen. I was like, I can barely get up to feed myself. So I don't, that's definitely not going to happen. So thank God I'm here, (laughs) y'all. I'm here. And as again, those of y'all who are up to date are aware, you know, I've had the most amazing emergency staff and then cardiologist help and all the stuff that finally got me healthy to where I am. Don't get me to start crying, but that I'm here and back. And so I've started coaching again in the recovery school program. So for those of y'all who are like, I want to work with you, but you're telling me I'm not going to be able to like get live support from you. That's not, that's not the case. That is fully up and back, back at them. And all the other things that I put on the back burner are coming back, including podcast curriculum. So what does this mean? This means that I can talk about these issues and have a new topic every week for another 10 years without running out. But when I think about how I want to make sure that the everyone who's listening is constantly growing and that we're rehashing and that we are getting clear on the foundational roots of what I teach here and why and becoming a healed and loved woman, like remember that framework that I created <laughs> around these issues, that we're actually growing together, right? And so I'm going to be making sure that I'm teaching from a curriculum here on the podcast. And so to make sure that everyone who's coming in, that you don't have to rely on binging earlier episodes, you know, especially for a longer running podcast like this one. I think it's fun to go back to those and it's really helpful. But I think hearing it again, for those of us, those of us who are not going to binge, who can only fit in a podcast or two a week. I want to start teaching those concepts again. I'm also really interested to hear how I may teach some of our earlier things again with where I am now personally, with the things I've seen in clients, with what I've seen works and what doesn't work. If any of the things that I've taught will have matured, if they've changed, if they've grown. And so I went through our archive and I pulled a set of episodes that I wanted to make sure that I retaught. And it was so hard. Y'all, that was... I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this because I cannot reteach, you know, there are at least three years worth of episodes. I was like, I could do these again. <laughs> I was like, no, that defeats the purpose of there being like, you know, core things that you want folks to learn. So I pulled a number. I'm not going to tell you all the number, 
but I pulled a, a good sized number of episodes for me to reteach throughout the year, but also with the flexibility to allow topics that come up organically to come in between. So that is a very long way for me to say y'all may be seeing podcast titles that you have seen before or hear me teach concepts that sound familiar. They're all intertwined, but you may see some of your favorite podcast episodes again, especially like in those, those first five episodes. There are a couple of those that I'm still getting tagged in consistently. So I may be teaching those again. So those will be coming down the road. So I'm really excited about that. One of the things that I really love to do is create workshops, create courses, create programs to take the things that we talk about here and make the step by steps of them, like demystify them and give y'all practical things that y'all can do for that. So, you know, coming back to create like a little, you can't see my air quotes, or maybe you can if you're watching the video, y'all started to record the podcast. So if you follow me on social media, you may start to see some clips of me recording the podcast live. Your girl is growing, your girl's evolving because <laughs> Some of y'all know me is it was me and my blanket in my bedroom. That was my safe space. And so I know that a lot of y'all really enjoy that. And I, I enjoy that when I see different clips from podcasts. So I am opening up that way. But I really am excited about the podcast kind of becoming its own little mini curriculum in a way. And so that, you know, when y'all do move forward and invest and go deeper into our programming that you have even a, a better springboard to come from. So there's that. And so the last change is going to happen. And this is probably more for me and a habit for me. But for those of y'all who may pick this up, I want to let you know that this is going to be, this is going to be intentional. That at the end of every episode, you know, after I talk about here, are the things for you to know, things for you to Keep in mind, this is what I want you to look out for. These are the places I want for you to grow. This is how I want you to grow, all that stuff, or how I suggest for you to, to go about that. All the things that I usually talk about in, in the podcast. At the end of every episode, I plan to be very intentional about directing you to what the next step is in regards to the world of Black Girls Heal. So we all know that my main program is the recovery school. That's that's the big mama. Like that's where everything is overarching. I teach all of my concepts there. Like that is the source from where everything flows. And there are smaller things, like there are smaller masterclass workshops. So if I'm teaching a program, if I have a podcast episode that's about mother wounds, even though the recovery school would help with that, we have our our replays and our recordings of our dealing with conflictual relationship with your mother workshop that someone could connect with. If someone's listening to this podcast and they are wanting to work on dating issues, I could point you to the recovery school. But then there is our smaller dating one-on-one for love addicts that you could go and participate in without doing the bigger program unless you wanted to have that full experience, especially if you wanted more support around it. You know, same thing when it comes to love deprivation, same thing when it comes to partner relationships. Like there are so many other resources that I have that can feed into your support. And so I'm going to be my plan and this is a habit. So I might forget y'all. So if you're listening, you're like, what's the next step? Be patient with me. <laughs> but I'm going to be more intentional about saying, okay, if you want to learn more about this topic and you want to heal from it and grow from it, this is what I have to help you with that. And sometimes it will be the recovery school. I mean, that's that's why it's the main way that I support people because it is so dynamic and robust and lifetime access and all that stuff. But there could be smaller options for everyone as well. So yeah. So yeah, that is some of the changes that are coming and the reasons why. And I hope, I really, really hope that these changes are going to be supportive for y'all. Having a reteaching of our core foundational things to help y'all grow. You know, even when I, I, there are, what I've learned, especially when I let my ego and my pride go of what I should know and what I think I should know and like trying to do all the things myself is re-listening to the same things, like the same basic concepts from my favorite teachers and guides. It hits different. You know, there are some books I mostly 
do audiobooks these days still and versus physical books. I love physical books, but audiobooks are just so much more convenient for me, which I should partner with Audible because I, when I tell you my library is stacked <laughs> with audiobooks, but there are some books that I just listen to on repeat. And every time I hear it, it is something new. I like, I get something new. It's like, I get what I need in that moment. And so my hope is that the reteaching of these podcast episodes, along with all the other things that go, the other, you know, impromptu and organic episodes that come in between, I just hope this podcast continues to be that thing that you come back to, that you continue to listen to and that it helps you grow. And then also with focusing on self-love, I hope that the ways that I teach it just continue to grow and evolve and especially grow and evolve with those of you who've been listening for a long time, growing and evolving to the places that you needed to, but still being able to reach where everybody is. So again, I'll still be talking about relationships. I'll still be talking about craziness and dysfunction. I'll still be talking about trauma. And, but the North Star is going to be us. The North Star is going to be ourselves and not other people because other people could never fill us in the way that we can fill ourselves um, and we can understand ourselves. And then also for those of you who are like, okay, this is great and I'm ready for change. I got like six of those emails in my inbox this week as well, giving y'all those next best steps as well. And the variety of the ways that, variety of tools that I've created to help y'all do that. So I'm excited for this next season, but thank you so much to everyone for being a part of this community, of trusting me to be one of the voices on your shoulder. I hope that I continue to meet the needs that you have for as long as you will have me, whether or not it's for a season or for a lifetime. Just thank you for allowing me to be in that space. So that is it for now, y'all. I'm going to give y'all a next step, even though I didn't really (laughs) teach. I mean, I I guess I did teach when I was talking about focusing on self-love. But the next step that I would love for y'all to connect to, because it is the one that's limited time, is our Reclaiming Me workshop. So I am going to be meeting with y'all live in person in Charlotte in October or virtually. And we're going to have a full day workshop where we're going to be talking about reclaiming ourselves, getting to know who we are. but Even past that, all the ways that disappointments, things that we haven't surrendered, lack of of forgiveness of other people, lack of forgiveness of ourselves, confusion has affected our ability to trust ourselves and also trust other people and to let ourselves, to let those things go and to move forward. We're going to be talking about reclaiming our identity, our sense of self, like I already said, our voice, our power. And so I'm really excited about that. So whether or not you are able to meet me in real life in Charlotte, North Carolina, or if you need to join us with a virtual ticket, both of those options are available for you. And the replay will be available whether or not you come in person or live. So you can join by going to blackgirlsheal.org slash reclaim. Again, that's blackgirlsheal.org slash reclaim. And I suggest that you go ahead and get on those tickets as soon as possible because the early bird pricing ends on July 24th of 2023 at the time I'm recording this. So I know many of y'all are multitasking and you may not remember, but if you follow me on social, if you follow me on YouTube and you follow me on any of these places or you get an email and you're like, hey, sign up. Don't procrastinate there. (laughs) If you're next to a computer, if you're next to something, go ahead and click that link especially if this is something that you feel like is calling to you. So that's it for today, y'all. I'm sending you all the best and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Bye. Hey, so thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoy what you've learned, it doesn't have to stop here. You can check out the blackgirlsheal.org website and grab the worksheet for this week's episode or any of your other favorite episodes from our shop with an overview of the main points, healing circle discussion questions and journal prompts and challenges that you can take with you into the week. Also, you can check out any of our other self-study and coaching programs, resources and freebies to help you heal from the intimacy disorders of love addiction, love avoidance, love deprivation and the trauma that causes it. The best time to start or restart your healing journey is now. We hope you enjoy all of these resources. And until next time, remember you are so loved and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourselves.